Hello and welcome to this demo video for the uh, Spreadsheet Rugby World Cup game. Um, now we don't normally make demo videos for free downloads, but we did for this one just because we wanted to uh, explain how it works. Um, this is actually the video for version 2. Um, version 1 was, well, there have been quite a few changes between version 1 and version 2, so we've done a new, um, a new video, so this is a demo for the second version. Um, Let's start at the beginning. The first page is the setup page. This is the, you can see if I click over there, it's actually a black tab. The black tab is the first one that you set up at the beginning of the season. The blue tab you deal with at the end of the season before you clear the contents for a, for a new season. And the two red tabs are the ones you need to fill in during the season. Um, and the green ones are there just for, for you with stats and data and, and all sorts of other things on that you can have a look at. So let's start at the beginning with setup. <coughs> What you do is you first put in any players. Now you can have up to eight human players. I'll put my name in there. Um, you can have up to eight, and you can assign each one to a to a country, the country that they're playing for. Now the only difference between this version I'm showing you and the one you'll download is that I've already, if you have a look here, I've already completed nine seasons. So I'm starting in the tenth season. Now the first five seasons I played for England, and the second five I'm playing for South Africa because I want to show you that what happens when you when you switch teams you can in fact switch teams throughout um each spreadsheet will last for 10 seasons so let me put in south africa there and that changes so that is the first thing that you set up the second things are the uh the scores there would be the ratings of the teams there would be some ratings in there already based on their actual ratings so we've dropped them all down by a certain percent because new zealand went over 90 percent you can't pick a rating higher than 90 because they just win all the time um, and you can't pick a rating lower than 70. Uh, what I would suggest is having the difference between the highest rating and the lowest rating. I wouldn't have more than 15. Uh, the games are just so one-sided, then it's not really worth playing. Um, so that's what you do. Put in your the ratings. You can change those. You can see there that there's one player, which is South Africa, which is me. So I've got a human player. Um, and then what you do is you need to get, there's all sorts of random data going on that's been used, and that's behind these gray cells. So if you highlight that whole section, how did I do that? I started at the top one, shift, control, and right, and then shift, control, and down. Right click, copy, and then scroll down a bit further to the light gray cells, below the green header. Top left, right click, paste values. Not normal paste. Normal paste will ruin your spreadsheet. Paste values will do what you need. So click paste values. Believe it or not, there are random numbers in there which will help, which will um, determine the course of the matches. Um, you can't miss it. You can't see it, but it is there. And you you need to do that before every new tournament because that obviously just resets the whole you know randomization of the games. Next thing to do is to do the draw. So you need to do the tournament draw. So you start here and you start at the beginning. There we go. South Africa has been drawn in a group with Ireland, Scotland, and France. And then Wales are in a group with England, Australia, and New Zealand. So now we've got the groups, and that is the whole setup which is done. We've done the random numbers, we've done any players, we've selected which teams they play for, and we have uh, made sure the ratings are correct. The ratings you can leave, the players you can leave from season to season. So when you come to the new season, all you do is you re-copy and paste the random numbers, paste values, uh, you clear the contents here and you redo the draw. This you can leave unless you want to change it, and that you can leave unless you want to change it in the middle of the, the 10 seasons. So that's the first thing. The second one then, it would be the match day, which is the first match. So the first bit, if we had go to fixtures and results, we can see we've already got the matches. So the first match is actually between South Africa and Ireland. So I'm playing for South Africa, so that's a human player against Ireland. And we'll get to the first game in a second. If we go to the first game and select match number one, you'll see it populates for South Africa versus Ireland, so it's ready. The only thing I would suggest setting up on here before you start playing is this one. Resu results to show without playing. So what this means is when you click on a new game, it will show you the final result of that game before you even play the matches for the ones that you select. So you've got three options. You can either select all matches, which means that even if it's a, a player due to play the match, it'll show you the final results as soon as you click on it. If it's a computer matches, it'll show you the final results of the ones that are computer versus computers. In other words, no human players involved. 
and if you select no matches it won't show you any final results because you can still play the computer matches all that happens is they tell the computer will tell you what to pick so for now let's just leave that on computer matches because that means that if it's a computer versus computer it'll just show you the results so you don't actually have to play through the match um, but if it's a play human player like now it doesn't show the final results you need to play the game um, I'll come to how to play the game in a second Let's just have a look at the current matchup. This will automatically change and populate based on the match that's been selected. So because I've selected South Africa versus Ireland, this will show me South Africa versus Ireland. It will show me that South Africa usually beat Ireland. They've played against each other eight times. South Africa's won six of them. Ireland have won twice. Um, this fixture's never been drawn, and I'm playing for South Africa. It shows the last nine finishing places for South Africa in the World Cup and the last nine finishing places for Ireland. It shows that Ireland are actually stronger on points and uh, stronger on rating than South Africa. Um, so you can see the stats for the for the upcoming game as to what's happened in the past. Uh, you can also go to tables and knockouts. You can see the different tables. You can see the knockouts of two groups. Um, why are the knockout? Why do they already have teams going through? Well, that's just based on the finishing position. So it's showing if the if the leagues finish in this position, then South Africa will play England, Wales will play Ireland. Obviously, they're going to change as you go along as you play games that will automatically update. Um, your honours, yours will be clear. There won't be anything in there. But because I've played seasons before, it'll show not only my name and which medals I've won. Uh, this the this top five would have been one for England. The next four would have been one for South Africa. So it will it will show your medals regardless of which team you played for. But it will show the teams here as to who uh, who's won um, who's won the the the, the World Cup um, and which season. So season one, two, three, four, five, so on, through to ten. Um, you can come and have a look at your team player reports, which will show the teams. I've selected South Africa. It'll show where they finished in all the different seasons. It'll show how many matches they've lost, drawn, and won. It'll show uh, my name because I play for them, but then it'll show my finishing positions. So as you can see, those are different because in the first five, I was playing for England and not for South Africa. Um, if you select another country, like for argument's sake, Ireland, it'll show Ireland's finishing ones, and there's no player playing for Ireland, so it won't show anything below. So all you do on here is just select the team that you want to see. Everything else will update accordingly. Stats is similar, it just shows all the different teams and it shows all uh, uh, your green as far as um, how many points you scored and how many points you've conceded. So you can kind of see New Zealand is scoring a lot more, a lot more than they're conceding. Um, and you can see what, what medals that particular uh, team or country have won. And this will also update as you go along. So the more information you have here, so because I've got nine seasons, obviously there's a lot more information on here. When you start, these ones will be blank, that will be blank. Uh, this will be blank um, because you need to be doing uh, uh, complete, completing a few seasons before you actually, the, the more data you put in there, the better. So let's go back to the match. This is what it's all about and show you how to play. Now, because I am playing for South Africa, my player one, that's me. I need to do, well, play one is the first of the two plays. Uh, you get two plays to score a try. So what I need to do is, I'm playing from left to right, and I will do throughout the entire match because I'm on the left-hand side, they're on the right, they'll be playing from right to left. We start over here, and I want to get into their try line, which will be 100 points. So I can select a value to start off with. But now if I select 100 and go for gold and go, go for the end, kind of go, go for the, the, um, the, the try line, I'm not going to score 100. I'm going to score a random number because it's going to take a percentage of that. Now, how big a percentage will it take off? The maximum it will take off is the difference between 100 and your rating. So if my rating here is 81, it's going to take a percentage of 19. And it's going to be either, it could be as much as 19, or uh, it could be as much as 19 um, ahead of what I pick. It could be as much as 19 behind what I pick. So essentially, the bottom line is, if you don't, if if you want to be within the hundred, you need, in order to be sure, you need to pick eighty-one or possibly eighty-two. If you pick higher than that, higher than two, higher than your your rating, um, you run the risk of going over hundred in the first go. And what's the penalty for that? Well, that's exactly it. If you go over hundred in the first go, the opposition get a chance of taking a penalty. So what I'll do is I'll start off somewhat attacking but fairly conservatively let's go for 85 
And that's what it says. It says I've moved forward 86.7 and I've got 13 to go. So I've got a second one. So let me go for the second one and let me pick 12. And that says I finished within the within the trial line. What you need to do is finish, you need to get a total here of um, between 98.5 and 100. So you've got 1.5 to play with, 98.5 and 100. And that means that you finish in the try zone, which means that you could score a try. Now, the reason why I haven't scored a try is because Ireland's defence is defended. And that's all that's all based on the strength of the team and some random numbers, and it's all hidden. So I haven't scored a try. And now it's Ireland's turn for their first play. So now, because I need to play for the computer, they'll tell me what to pick. So they tell me to pick 87, which I pick. And they've got 21 to go. And then they, I click on here and I drop down this and they tell me they want to pick 21. So I pick 21. And they get it in and they actually score a try because my defense was rubbish. So they've scored a try. Now they're going to go for a kick. The computer will always kick with 50. What does 50 mean? 50% straight down the middle. And as they kick, you can see the wind has taken their kick past the post. So how do you make sure you get it on the post? Let's just go back. You can see the wind is blowing this way because the arrows are facing down. If it were the other side, the arrows might be facing up or down. But the, because it's facing down, it means the wind's going to drag it that way. So what would you do normally? Well, from the bottom up, 50s in the middle, 40s down below, 50s up the top. You, you can normally, in the conversion or penalty, select between 40 and 60. So 60 will be at the top. 40 at the bottom, this way around will be the other way around, 40 at the top, 60 at the bottom, because it goes from left to right, as you would view it as the kicker. Um, so really, the, with the winds blowing this way, you would want to aim for that post, which would be at 55, and the wind would the wind would then drag it down and you'd get it over. But the computer always goes down the middle, so that would mean Ireland's missed their, their chance. So now it's my chance to attack again, and I can choose any value. I can go for 100. Let's just see what happens if I go for 100. You go for 100 actually that was perfect because now i'm two below so the second time i go for one and i get in the end zone and there we go try for me now i get to take a kick and the wind's blowing that way so i want to aim for the bottom post now that this post here be 40 45 50 55 60 so i want to go for 55 so if i aim for the 55 and the wind kills it, and I still get it over, which means South Africa score the conversion, and you carry on. Now, let me do one more because I want to show you what happens if you overkick it. They've got it. They they've got it right. First go, they picked 87. They got it in the zone. They don't need to pick anything for the second one. So what do they do for the second one? They pick zero, but they didn't score a try because my defense held up. Now let me try 100 again and see if I can go over. There we go. What that means, difference one, means I've actually gone over the try zone. I've gone right over in one go, and it's more than 100. So what do I do now? It still asks me to pick the second one, but whatever I pick, it's going to say you went over, which means Ireland get a penalty, and then Ireland can take a penalty and do exactly the same as they would before, and they've missed it once again. So that's how the game works. What you need to do is get these two as close as possible within between 98.5 and 100 to get to the try zone. And the more often you do that, the more often you will have a chance of scoring a try. Once you complete right down to the bottom, the final score will show and it will show you underneath here what success rate you had. So how, what percentage of the times did you actually get the ball into the, the try zone? In other words, uh, how, how successful were your attempts regardless of, of the score? Whatever happens will tell you over here what's going on. So you can look down there what's going on and you can have a look up here to see where your where your markers landed each turn. And I think that's really all that I need to show you. The only thing I would show you is let me show you what happens if you clear that. If I change this to show all matches, it would have actually put the final score up and it would have said Ireland win 27-50. So then you don't actually have to play the game if you don't want to. You can just go, well, what was the final score? Once the game's finished, each game is finished, regardless of whether you looked at the final score or whether you've played the entire game, regardless of whether they're human players or computer players, or whether you played or viewed the score, whatever. As soon as the final score's up, if you go to the fixtures and results, you'll see that particular fixture turns yellow. Just click on each cell and select what's there. Because that will bring the values across from the game so you can go back to the current match day 
you can either highlight this whole gray section and clear contents. So you can either, if you filled them in and actually played the game, you can do that. Oh, we want to get them all. You can highlight those, right click and clear contents. Or you can go to all matches and you can go back to computer matches and it'll take the scores away again. Then, once you've done that for the first match, you can then go on to the second match. Now, because it's a computer game and it's Scotland 17, France 17, you can go back to the draws, uh, the, the, sorry, fixtures and results, select that, and you can go back, current matchup, and move on to the next one. Current, you can have a look at the current matchup, Scotland, France. You can see there, France have won um, once, Scotland have won twice, and they've actually drawn twice. So that is the uh, that's the gameplay, and you progress through obviously because you've set it to computer matches. The computer matches will just show a result. We'll play the human matches. Same thing occurs. Put the fixtures and results uh, through as you do onto each line. And then once you finish the season, let's just go here and highlight that. Oh. Uh, come on, get it copy. Let's just put that same score throughout that obviously is not going to happen but let's just say that that happens um and you go at the end of the season so you filled up all of these you played the final the final's been won what do you do now you come to the, the data season data transfer at the end of the season you highlight this block of dark gray you right click copy you go to the next season in which you need to fill in you would obviously start at season one but i've gone on to season 10 season uh that should be season 10 right click paste values into season 10 and i'm done now with that which means that what you can do then is you can come here once you've done that copy and paste you can come back to your fixtures at the end of the season you can right click you can clear those contents you can then go to your match you can clear that as well so you're ready for the next season you can come back to your setup right click Clear those contents. You can then come back here again to these gray tabs. Right click, copy, right click, paste values. That makes new random numbers, a whole new setup, and you can do a new draw exactly as you did before. Just select the next one, and as you can see, they're different teams in different groups for the second for the next tournament and you can go back to match day and you can start all over again as you complete the match do the fixtures and results and then of that season go back to season day transfer and put data into the next season and as you go along this data will grow you'll get more stuff to show here more information to show here until you finish 10 seasons like i would have done now and then what you do is you can either you can either come to the season day transfer and just clear those two lots of data or you can just start a new spreadsheet and keep this one and start a new one for your next 10 tournaments. Um, and you can switch teams, obviously, to players throughout that tournament. How do you do that? Well, it's simple. You just come to the setup and change it to team. So that's all. I hope that that makes sense to you. And I hope that you enjoy playing this game. It's taken me a lot of time to make it, but I enjoy playing it. And I hope that you enjoy it too. And uh, if you need any business-related spreadsheets, please do give me a shout because I'll be happy to chat to you about those. Um, so thank you very much and all the best. Bye.